machine translation, it is something we have every day in our phone. Does anybody use Google Translate? Yes. I guess everybody does, right? So this is uh, machine translation, and I will briefly talk about the history. I will not go into technical details because it requires a full education as an engineer. I will just uh, talk about it and how do we use it uh, practically as translators and as uh, like regular people. Yeah, so it all started uh, roughly in 1950s, the first attempts to make the machine do the translation. Uh, of course, it was not like nowadays. The, we didn't have computers as we have them like now. Uh, it was a bit awkward. So the first attempt was called of, I don't know how to move here, rule-based machine translation. Basically, the machine had a big dictionary, English to Turkish, let's say, and it had a big set of rules, for example, uh, grammatical rules, I mean. How to, uh, if we have a present simple in English, how would you translate it, uh, what would be corresponding in Turkish? This tense, right? For pre past, pre past simple, which tense would be okay? And uh, when you fed the machine with the source text, it would analyze it, translate single words uh, using the dictionary, and apply uh, those grammatical rules. Of course, it was awkward, really strange. Uh, it worked for some subjects. It could work for um, somewhat technical translation, but of course, uh, not for literature. It was just impossible. Do you have the picture of the machine? No, unfortunately, I don't. <laughs> uh, there were like three different approaches inside it uh, under the umbrella of rule-based translation. Direct, transfer-based, interlingua, I don't even know what it is about. Uh, I didn't dig into details because it has almost nothing to do with what we have nowadays. Then we had example-based machine translation. Uh, this didn't have those grammatical rules. It didn't have any dictionary. What it had, uh, it had a huge database of translations uh, made by human before. So but every time you feed the machine with a sentence, it goes to its uh, memory and looks if somebody have already translated this text before. And if yes, then okay, this is the result, this would be. It was, again, slightly awkward because, I don't know, for example, uh, you can have the word key, which could be translated at with at least five different meanings. Key as a, on the keyboard, key as a, to lock the door, key as something, main feature, etc., etc. So it was awkward, really. It didn't work good. Uh, then after that one, we had statistical machine translation. Again, it had a huge database of previous translations, and it also uh, took a look at how often do you see this translation for this phrase? So if it sees that key is mostly translated as a key feature, something main important, then it would translate it like that. And you might have something, the door word had a key feature, really strange. And um, yeah, also three approaches over here, word-based, when the, the machine was looking for just a certain word, uh, syntax-based, uh, it was looking for a certain sentence or a part of sentence, and phrase-based again, uh, all about short phrases. This is what we had on AliExpress or before 2015 as translation, and then machine, uh, neural machine translation uh, came to the stage and things just changed dramatically. Uh, this is what we use now. All the Google Translate, all the other applications which translate the text for you, they use this uh, neuron translation. It's a new technology, uh, appeared in 2014-15. Uh, it is based on how neurons in human brain work. I don't know how, honestly, I have no idea. Uh, it is something very complicated. The ne neurons can connect to each other and it helps us learn new things. Somehow, apparently, they figured out, the engineers figure out, figured out how to do the same thing with translation. So uh, neural, ma neural machine translation is something which learns. 
it can learn uh, based on the sources. Uh, this is all I can say about it because again, it is a very technical topic. It's just hard to get into it without a certain background. I guess if Batuhan was here, he could have explained. He's not here anyways. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, Google, as uh, one of the best examples, uh, we have Google Translate, and it was not that good back then. I don't know if you can see. Uh, this translation and is not it all right was a bit awkward. I mean, you can understand the idea, but of course, this one is everything all right. It's a better version. So it improved, it was 2015. Then one more improvement I found for you. Uh, Google used to be a very sexist. We can see it with Turkish language. So if uh, we are talking about professions, a babysitter would be translated as she. And the doctor would be translated as he previously. Right? 2000, it was, I guess it was 2015. But now they have improved and they added this. So maybe somebody could try uh, type or be doctor and we will see what it gives us right now. Yeah. Would you? But I think she's a doctor and he's a doctor both. They have both. A bag will get you as well. Maybe I'm using an older as well. Ah, okay. <laughs> so yours is working, right? Yes. Yeah, it works. It's a, it's a <laughs> both. She yeah. When I say Goretman, uh, it says she does this. <laughs> what about yours? Ne diyor seninkiler? Hayıkısı da var. She's a doctor. She's a doctor. The she is Mine says he. Mine is he. He for the doctor. Yeah. <laughs> what is the most recent one, one it means? And it's not the same. It's going to say he, but it's about the it's ver version of this. So I'm not updating it because mm. after my phone is bad. Very interesting. So, uh, as you know, not only Turkish has this uh, uh, division of uh, genders. In Russian, we have it, but we will. I didn't check it, but probably it would be the same. Uh, so now it is supposed to show you something like this, just like John Stewart told us, uh, both genders. Uh, this is it about Google Translate. Uh, one more thing about how do we. Uh, apply those machine translations in real life. Uh, first, as uh, regular people will use Google Translate or any other applications, uh, Google Translate, in my opinion, being the best. And actually, a couple years ago, everybody could, I don't know if it is still available now, everybody could participate in uh, quality control for Google Translate. So you could go to a certain web page, uh, you know. Okay, it's correct. Uh, Still works. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So uh, and you can volunteer. They give you, they show you translations being made, and uh, you decide whether it's correct or not. If it's correct, you click correct, etc. If it's not correct, you suggest your version. This is how Google improved. I did it for some time. It was quite fun. Sometimes the translations were really awkward. Uh, for professionals, uh, we use something called CAT tools. C A T. Computer aided translation. This is a huge tool, huge uh, application which helps you uh, to translate professionally. Uh, some of wide, wide known ones like Trados, SmartCat, MateCat, etc. I will show you just how it looks like. Something like that. Pretty crazy. Uh, this is what? This is Trados, a really complicated one. Basically, what it does for you, you have a source language. I don't know, let's say a, an article, a big article, three pages. It uh, breaks it up to short uh, segments for you. A segment is usually one sentence. And on the left you have source, on the right you would type uh, your translation. Not only you can type your translation, the machine can pre-translate it for you. And uh, you can decide whether it's a good one and you accept it, or you can uh, a little bit change it. 
or change it a lot later. Can we change it on the sentence itself? On the here? No, the other one. Yeah. The, the, tra the translated version. Can we make changes on the translated version, or do we have to write it again, the whole sentence? With we can make changes, yes. Uh, another one is a little bit more simple. This is called SmartCut. It's a web version. Just three. Okay, I won't count it. Source uh, broken into sentences, segments. Then here you have your translation, and here you have uh, machine translation. The suggested one, and you can again decide if it's good or not. It's all automated. Uh, it has, of course, spell check. It has a check for, for example, uh, over here you have a euro sign, and it will make sure that the euro sign stays over here. Or if you have numbers, it will check that the numbers should be also uh, present in the translation, etc., etc. Many things. Anyways, um, what else? Ah, that's all. <laughs> a short one for today. Sorry about it. Uh, so those things, uh, they really help a lot. I use them in my work. Uh, especially it is useful when you have a big translation, big project, and you work not on your own, but together with <coughs> uh, That consistency is very, very important. I don't know, I guess you have, might have talked about it in technical translation. When you translate a, I don't know, a manual, something technical. Uh, it is very important that the very same form is translated uh, the same uh, way every time you have it in the text. This is hard to do on your own with just your hands. So machine helps a lot about it. It just checks it. It's, yeah, uh, it is useful for proofreading or editing or quality control. So basically, all, all those CAD tools were invented as so there was a big translation agency. They invented it as uh, their own inner product, and then just they sell it nowadays. Yeah, this is it. And uh, I was just thinking maybe we could discuss briefly if all this technology, all this neural translation, Google Translate, etc., will ever replace humans. Hmm? Will it? What's your opinion, huh? <laughs>